A man online who identified with several troubling groups, such as neo-Nazis, incels, and white supremacists, carried out a mass shooting in Dallas, Texas. The online writings that he left behind bore the thoughts of a very deranged man on the edge of a killing spree. This video involves a lot of online craziness, and that's where today's sponsor, Aura, comes in. Have you ever Googled yourself and found out that all of your personal info was out there on those public listing sites? I was looking up some of my own data on these sites, and yeah, I'm really not liking my stuff being out there like that. Aura is an app that can identify those data brokers that are exposing your data and submit the necessary opt-out requests on your behalf. Those brokers are legally required to take down the information once they're asked. They just make it nearly impossible to do so. So why not let Aura handle it? Aura even protects you from all sorts of other online threats that you can't even see. It's really easy to set up. You won't need to download a bunch of other apps like VPNs, parental controls, antivirus, password managers, identity theft insurance, etc. You'll get everything at once for a very affordable price in comparison to the competitors. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online while you do the things you want to do with a little more peace of mind. So you can either let people continue to exploit and profit off your private information, or you can go to Aura.com slash DireTrip to start your two-week free trial. Also, link below in the description. And now, on to the content. This case is one that has just occurred very recently at the time of the creation of this video. Some information might change as time passes, but this is what we know for now, so buckle up. Today we have the story of a man named Mauricio Martinez Garcia, a 33-year-old man living in Northeast Dallas. Mauricio joined the U.S. Army back in 2008, likely shortly after graduating high school. This all sounds well and good, but he never actually completed basic training. Instead, he was terminated after only three months after his superiors started getting concerned with the state of his mental health. Since the decision to let him go was an administrative separation and not actually any kind of discharge, this would never go on to show up in any sort of criminal background check. While in the military, let's just say that Mauricio met with some like-minded folks. Of his time in the military, he wrote, I have never been around so many white people. And you know what? They weren't the racist the media made them out to be. I then met actual white nationalists and that's when I became a full-blown white supremacist. One of my white friends actually said, I'm not a racist compared to you. It was a double-edged sword. These two Hispanics dropped me like a hot tamale when they found out about my beliefs. After that crushing defeat, Mauricio started working as a security guard for a number of different businesses. Louise Protective Service, Statewide Patrol, Verified Response Security and Investigations, and most recently at an aluminum supply company. Because of his work as a security guard, he was required to undergo some firearms proficiency training in 2018. Mauricio lived with his parents for most of this time, but eventually went on to get his own place. He was apparently very proud of this, uploading house tours online. How's it going? So today I'm going to be giving a tour of my apartment. All right, we're going to start at the door. Pretty cool poster or some posters. Got this poster of Pablo Escobar. I kind of wish I'd put more stickers on there. Uh, yeah, the only good thing about the door is that it gives me a, it gave me a chance to hang this poster of my girlfriend, Amy Lee. <laughs> yep. I got some more Five Nights at Freddy's plushies, um, this little nightstand. Over here we got um, some more posters. Okay, these three posters. Uh -huh. For some reason, his security guard license expired in April of 2020 and he never went on to renew it. This could sometimes be due to some sort of criminal charge, but as I said, Mauricio didn't have any sort of criminal background. It seems that he just let it lapse and never went back. Mauricio usually kept to himself, completely cutting himself off from any sort of socializing. In fact, he had an online journal slash social media account that he continually updated despite having zero friends. He was a YouTuber, going by Dusty Shackleford 6794 a King of the Hill reference. Although he had very few subscribers, if any, his YouTube account has since been deleted. Mauricio was mainly active on a Russian social media platform of all things. This site is called Odnoklasniki, but it's more commonly referred to as OK.ru. Going by the name Psychovision5, Mauricio would post all about his extremist views while using an avatar of a smiley face with a Hitler mustache, which is some good foreshadowing as to what kind of material his profile contained. 
Mauricio had gone through what many have come to call self-radicalization. As it sounds, he became a radical not due to the influence of people around him, but due to diving down some internet rabbit holes himself. The writings on his profile promoted neo-Nazism, incel ideology, and hate against women, Jews, and certain races, mainly Arabs and Asians. He posted pictures of the tattoos he had gotten all over his body, which included both a large swastika and an SS symbol. Another was a tattoo of the slogan, Du es Volt, which is a reference to the Crusades that is usually used in anti-Muslim rhetoric online. He posted a whole lot of pictures of Nazis, both old and new, in an album he labeled My Kind of People. He would share a lot of various posts from far-right sources like 4chan, Nick Fuentes, The Daily Stormer, Andrew Anglin, The Uns Review, and V-Dare. More concerningly, he praised mass killers and often discussed his admiration for other criminal cases, such as the 2023 Nashville shooting and the 2014 Isla Vista killings performed by Elliot Roger. He wrote posts detailing his violent incel beliefs, writing lines such as, The reason men chase resources is because of what resources attract women. If men cannot be the creators of society, they will be the destroyers of society. Now it's up to society to decide which role they want us to follow. Men aren't entitled to sex? True, I agree, but women aren't entitled to safety either. The violent responses of men today are retaliatory. While being an incel and hating women, he didn't really hate them in the way that you might expect. He just didn't exactly think they deserved respect. He posted a picture of himself at Hooters with a waitress, writing, Me at the Twin Peaks in Frisco on Preston Road. Now that's a girl who knows how to make a guy smile, how to drive a guy crazy. It seems that he was a regular patron of Hooters, posting several pictures with different waitresses. In some of his posts, he wrote, I don't care about getting a girlfriend anymore. I still want sex, just not a girlfriend, because I don't believe any more women are capable to genuinely love a man. Mauricio was also a self-proclaimed white supremacist. I'm sure that a lot of you are going to find that revelation pretty confusing, as Mauricio is definitely a Latino gentleman. Well, he actually addressed this pretty often, saying that Latino people were, in his own words, basically white. He seemed to really like Nick Fuentes, who is also a white supremacist with Mexican heritage. Mauricio wrote, Hell, Nick Fuentes said something like that while he was on The Pearl Show. I think I even read in the news Hispanics could be the new white supremacist. Just the other day, this black dude told me that the line is blurring. He can't tell the difference anymore. Someone would look white, but they're actually Hispanic. In other posts, he seemed a little more pessimistic. He wore an It's Okay to Be White t-shirt while writing that he is Hispanic whether he likes it or not. More concerningly, Mauricio started posting more and more photos of body armor, weaponry, and ammunition on his profile. It didn't appear he was merely a hobbyist, he was really stocking up. All of his weaponry was bought legally as he had no criminal record. His bulletproof vest bore a patch reading RWDS, meaning Right Wing Death Squad. He didn't really try to hide his identity at all while doing this, showing his unique tattoos, receipts with his own name on them, an old ID card, and even his phone number, although he did try to censor that one at least. In a handwritten note Mauricio uploaded to his profile, he talked about how someone had told him that he looks like the type of person who would walk into a crowd and start shooting. Something that made him proud. Mauricio began to start posting pictures of a mall in Texas. Several dozen of them, actually. He posted everything from the location on Google Maps, to pictures of the exterior of the mall, to a timetable showing when the mall was the most busy. While a lot of people out there will probably say someone should have seen all of this and done something, Mauricio's account was completely unknown to anyone at the time. He had zero friends, very little interaction, and the whole thing was posted on a Russian social media site that most Americans don't even know exists. It's believed that he used his profile as more of a personal diary, choosing that particular platform due to its lack of moderation. Mauricio would go on to make his final post on his profile, which read similarly to a note one would write before they intended to end their own life. This message was said to have included more than 500 words of violent, hateful fantasies, self-aggrandizement, and pop culture references, like references to South Park episodes. He talked about his poor mental health, saying that no psychologist would have been able to fix him. He wondered about what his family would say about what he was about to do. And from that point onward, nothing was ever posted to his profile again. This brings us to Allen Premium Outlets, a large outdoor mall located about 25 miles north of Dallas, Texas in the northern suburb. May 6, 2023, 3.36 p.m. Wearing black tactical gear, including his body armor with the RWDS patch, Mauricio Martinez Garcia pulled up to the mall in a silver sedan. He parked his car just outside of the entrance of the mall and pulled out an AR-15-style rifle. 
He immediately opened fire on pedestrians in the parking lot, shooting 15 people within about three minutes. He fired apparently indiscriminately, firing dozens of shots in all directions, all of which was captured on dashcam footage of a car nearby. The first call to the police department came only four minutes after it all began. One store employee recalled that those running from the store began to notify others of what was going on and help them to hide in the back rooms of the stores. Hundreds of mall shoppers were left running from the scene on foot. Coincidentally, a police officer was already at the mall. Upon hearing the gunfire, he rushed to the scene, engaged in a short gunfight with Mauricio, and killed him right there on the spot, effectively ending the shooting. A nearby military vet attempted to give CPR to three of the victims before they were rushed to a nearby hospital due to the severity of their injuries. Several bodies were strewn about the scene, all covered by sheets. Three different guns were found on Mauricio, with five more being discovered in his car. On him, he had his rifle along with two handguns. Nine people were rushed off to the hospital. One of them died upon arriving, succumbing to their injuries. Three survivors were put into surgery and remained in critical condition for some time. Four others remained in the hospital under stable condition. Out of all the people injured, some were very little kids, as young as three years old. Many others lost their lives in the attack. Christian Lacour was a 20-year-old man working as a security guard at the mall. He was identified by his family shortly after as one of the victims. His grandmother posted on social media, saying, He was such a beautiful soul. I was so proud of him and so glad I got to see him two weeks ago. Aishwarya Tharikanda was a 26-year-old engineer who had moved to the United States from India. She was shopping with a friend when she was suddenly shot and lost her life. Her friend was also one of the injured who ended up in stable condition in the hospital. Her family is planning to fly her body back to India where she can be buried. A 32-year-old man, Elio Kumana Rivas, lost his life during the shooting as well. He was at the mall buying a toy for his six-year-old daughter's birthday when he was shot. Ironically, Elio had actually fled Venezuela due to rising rates of violence and was seeking asylum in the U.S. There is a GoFundMe page available for his daughter. Two elementary school-aged sisters, Daniela and Sofia Mendoza, aged 11 and 8, also lost their lives in the attack. They were out shopping with their mother when the incident occurred. Their mother, Ilda, is still in the hospital. A GoFundMe page was set up to help with her medical bills, funeral expenses, and anything else she might need. Link in the description. Then, almost an entire family was lost in the attack. This was the Cho family, an American-born family of Korean descent. The father, Kyu Song Cho, the mother, Cindy Cho, and their two sons, William and James, were all shopping at the mall. Kyu Song, Cindy, and James, who was only three years old, all lost their lives there on the scene. William Cho, only six years old, was left as the only survivor of his family. He had just celebrated his sixth birthday when his family was murdered and he himself was rushed to the hospital with horrific injuries. After spending some time in the ICU, he was stabilized and moved into regular hospital care. A GoFundMe page was set up for him as well, now that he's lost absolutely everything at such a young age. Link in the description to that one as well. Mauricio, being a YouTuber, had scheduled a video to go live the evening of the attack. In that video, he awkwardly stared into the camera, wearing a scream mask, only to remove it and say, Not quite what you were expecting, huh? Police found out that, before the attack, Mauricio had been staying in a hotel in northwest Dallas for quite some time. Search warrants were issued for both his hotel room and his family's home, given that he had lived there for so long. The FBI raided the home and police officers were stationed outside until the next day. The family used a translator to speak with the officers. Mauricio's family is struggling to come to terms with what their son had done. His stepfather said, I know you want answers and we want answers too. We're like you guys. You guys have questions and are looking for answers, but we are as well. You know how people are feeling about this, this horrible thing. Believe me, it's horrible and it's double for us. A vigil was held for the victims the next day on May 7th at the Cottonwood Creek Baptist Church. Both the governor of Texas and the lieutenant governor came out to attend. A memorial was set up for the victims near the mall, with crosses standing in honor of those who were lost. After the shooting, the internet basically went into chaos with unfounded accusations and conspiracy theories surrounding the event. 
Some celebrities, such as Elon Musk, said that Mauricio's social media account was actually a government psyop. A lot of people within Mauricio's own sphere online spread a rumor that he was actually an illegal immigrant, which wasn't true, he was born in the US. Some said that he was actually part of a Mexican drug cartel, which also proved not to be true. I mean, the man barely left his apartment. And worst of all, the internet identified the wrong man as being the shooter based only on having the same name as the guy. This isn't the first time the internet has done something like that. Mauricio's social media profile was eventually deleted, causing some people to joke that apparently the moderation-free platform does have some standards after all. Sadly, this shooting was only the start of a very bad weekend for Texas. In a town called Brownsville, eight people were killed by an SUV that plowed through a crowd of people waiting outside a migrant shelter the next day. Security cam footage showed a group of people waiting for a bus near the Ozanam Center when the car rammed into all of them. Seven people died then and there, with an eighth dying in the hospital later that day. Nine others were injured to various degrees. Most of the victims were Venezuelan men spending the night at the shelter before boarding a bus. Authorities said that the perpetrator was very uncooperative and that the entire incident seemed intentional. That same day, one person was killed and two others were injured during a shootout that took place on a train in Dallas, only 30 minutes away from the mall. After two people got into an argument, gunfire broke out on the train. Officers were soon called out to the scene and found two people, one of them being an innocent person uninvolved in the argument, bleeding out from gunshot wounds. They were both rushed to the hospital. The victim involved in the argument passed away while the bystander seems to have lived. One more person was hit by shrapnel but was treated at the scene. The unnamed shooter has been charged with one count of murder and two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. On May 8th and 9th, mall customers were finally allowed to go and retrieve their cars. Personal belongings dropped on the scene were sent to a nearby rec center to be picked up. Flags in the area were set to half mass in order to honor the victims for the next several days. And then this case bred a mountain of controversy. For instance, the Monday after that weekend, the Texas Hound of Representatives Select Community on Community Safety voted 8 to 5 to raise the age you need to be to buy an AR-15 style rifle from 18 to 21, with both Democrats and some Republicans agreeing that it was necessary. It seems unlikely that the bill will pass in the Texas Senate, though. Many schools had walkout protests in support of gun control. Some schools even had threats of shooting shortly after the incidents. Joe Biden urged Congress to pass an assault weapon ban and enact universal background checks, saying, Tweeted thoughts and prayers are not enough. The South Asian Voter Education Foundation said that the incident was a hate crime against immigrants, specifically Asians, noting that half the victims who died were Asian. They urged the police to look deeper into this fact, saying, This is an infection our country must cure. Today, I am here to say that hate groups have no home in Texas. A gun show that was scheduled to take place in the area was canceled, although the organizer refused to elaborate on the reasons for the decision. The mall itself finally reopened on May 31st, but each individual store was allowed to reopen at their own pace. On June 26, the grand jury cleared the police officer who shot Mauricio of any wrongdoing, saying that this use of force was more than justified. Once this was cleared, the police released the body cam footage of the shooting on June 28th, although it was edited to exclude the actual killing. The police say that, despite all of Mauricio's online writings, they still haven't been able to find out any specific motive for the shooting. The big question that we're dealing with right now is what's his motive? Why did he do this? Well, the big question is we don't know. That's what the investigation is trying to find out. This has been the second deadliest mass shooting in 2023, being the 248th mass shooting of the year so far. Once again, thank you for watching my video. Go ahead and give me a like if you enjoy the content, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Rather than plug my Patreon in this one, I'm just going to once again reiterate that the links to those two GoFundMes are down in the description below, but I will shout out to the top patrons. We've got Jake Parsons, Rabid Snarf, Royal Pain and Ass, Kylie Jeffers, Tracy Farrell, Jada, Dana Hart, Anna B, Sunrider, Lee aka Crust, Emilio Morales, George Lopez, Mini Tina, Ron Murillo, Travis Billings, Jason Whitehurst, Jim Dowell, Kimmy Leffel, Melina Lee Williams Haas, M. Pilato, Stephen Jamie Kramer, Max Swordguy, Pao Yang, April Diamond, Starfade, Angie, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Sash Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankus, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Adrian Lawley, Marsh, Rinsenstein, 
Kim Peek, Lex Luthor, Lux Alpaca, CSD, Scoochie Main, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You all have never stolen my car. This has been your host Kyle, thank you, and good night.